and... Hi everybody, I'm Hal Weeks for Stockin' the Wild Auto Harp and we are coming to you from Daigle Auto Harps in beautiful SeaTac, Washington and I have a videographer today. My very first forage into working with another person filming me. And so that's exciting. I want to thank Keith Daigle who is behind the cameras today. Um, and we have, oh, look at that. It's my boss. <laughs> it's Pete Daigle. And he's here to answer some viewer questions. We both get questions through our emails, um, through our YouTubes. Um, and it turns out they're the same questions. Um, and so we thought we would, um, start doing this occasionally, um, just answering uh, questions that we get asked all the time. So um, um, I'm going to let Pete field the first question on the list. Pete? Hey, sounds good. Thanks, Hal. Um, okay, so we get questions all the time about buying uh, a used auto harp, but lots of people who are, especially people who are just getting started on the auto harp are not ready to spend what it takes to get into a custom instrument and so they're looking for something to get started with. Um, there are no uh, really good solutions that uh, that are you know built in a, in America today that are that are in what you'd call a truly affordable range. So people go looking for the old Oscar Schmitz. Some people go looking for newer Oscar Schmitz. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, the yin and yang of that. Um, what to look for when you're looking at a used auto harp. Now Hal's already got some good tips on a, one of his videos about looking at used auto harps, so check that out. But we're going to talk about a couple specifics today. Um, one is uh, to find an auto harp with a flat top. That's an important thing because if it's not flat, it means something is going wrong with the frame of the auto harp. Something's going wrong with the, the structure of the auto harp. And what it means is you may have an instrument that is going to begin to collapse or begin to uh, uh, what we do call a slow fold, where it, uh, if you look down the edge of an auto harp, I don't know if you can see that or not, they always have a very slight curve. If that curve starts uh, getting too much progress, well, it's going to start going flat every time you go to pick it up. You're going to have to tune it again, and pretty soon it's going to fold up altogether and not be tunable at all. There's several things that are going to cause that, and Hal's got a couple of examples he's going to show you here. But one of the things we wanted to show you today was this aluminum anchor that's uh, that's at the end of the Oscar Schmidt auto harp. It's the anchor for the strings. It's an excursion that drops down into a slot uh, in the frame of the auto harp. And originally, this were, these were just held in here by friction. You, the idea was you pull the tension up, they can't move anywhere, and the friction holds them in place. Um, after they started having some problems with them, they started putting three tiny little screws that Hal is going to show you which didn't do very much to help. What happens is this anchor will begin to lift a tiny bit and it does not have to lift very much at all. You can barely see it when it's giving a uh, exponentially more pressure downward on this extrusion, more pressure downward on the top of your instrument. And very shortly you can have an instrument like this one which is beginning to warp down. Now this is an American made instrument. We took the uh, bars off so you could see the top better. Uh, normally would be one that uh, people would like to have, but it's beginning to bow. Uh, this may last a while, it may not last a while. Hal and I were just talking about how long the Oscar Schmitz in general were going to go because of this problem. So uh, I'll let you uh, grab that. And 
Well, the first thing I want to show you, I am going to take this ruler, which I hope shows up in the video. It's got white lettering on it so that you can actually see the height of the string off the top. And as I move it towards the sound hole, you'll see the measurement go up because the top is sinking. Now I'm at the sound hole and oops. But all the way down here, that's how far it's sunken. And this is hard to see when you are looking at an auto harp with the chord bars on because a lot of times it's happening under the chord bars where you can't see, which is um, pretty tricky. And a lot of times people who are selling these, they don't know it's there. And they take pictures of it, put it on eBay or whatever, and you don't see that in the pictures and it all looks well, but then you get it and it's sunken. Okay, So if you're shopping for an auto harp, you need to know that. Furthermore, if you've got one of these, it's a good idea to take preemptive measures to prevent it from happening. Because I, I'm beginning to suspect that with age, these old classic B model auto harps, it's starting to happen to them all. Eventually, it's all going to start rising. And it only takes about a millimeter of rise before it starts affecting the top. So I brought a couple of other props to show you. Hand me those. So this is just a block of wood um, because I can't really show you this with an auto harp. But the 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 anchor, this is this is an Oscar Schmidt anchor, and it's designed to sit in a route, and the route is actually a, an oval, and there's another piece of wood that comes back like this. And it works by friction. This, the strings are pulling this way, which pulls this out, but then there's another piece of wood here that stops it from going anywhere. It holds it down tight. But with time, what we're finding is that it starts lifting, and it only has to lift about that far, about a millimeter before your top starts going south. So that's not very much at all. And the way you can see it is that right under this corner, there's a teeny little triangle that you could slide a pin underneath if you had access to that end. That's enough to cause it to fail. So the way to fix this is you got to screw it in. Now, the best way to do it is to screw in this way with big beefy screws. That's what we do here in the shop, is we put in five screws along here to keep it tight against there. And that will keep that from happening. Um, but what Oscar Schmidt is doing is they've taken little itty bitty screws like this, and they've put them going straight down into the back of the harp. And another problem is, is that there's open space between this plate and the back of the harp that that screw goes across before it burrows into the back of the auto harp with this tiny little tip of the point with this tiny little screw with tiny little threads. And that only has a tiny bit of effectiveness. It's not enough. <laughs> right. These guys are like number four screws. We use a number eight, which is quite a bit larger. And we go in like this, which is impossible to reach on your own. We have special tools that we do it with. And um, unfortunately, um, don't try this at home, folks, <laughs> because it's not, um, uh, it takes sort of major surgery. It's not an expensive job to do, but it does. Um, take some special tools to do it, and um, um, you might want to leave it to the pros. But if you have a nice vintage harp already, like a Centurion or a Festival Series, or just a su super sweet sounding um, vintage harp that you really love, you might want to take preemptive action 
to keep it that way because I'm starting, I'm starting to see this on about 50% of the vintage harps. And my guess is that in 20 years, they could all be gone. Um, so, it, you know, it's just an age thing. Um, so does this happen on, with fine tuners? Uh, with the fine tuners, with the Oscar Schmidt fine tuners, yes, it, it absolutely does. So, uh, if they're again, it's a matter of anchoring. Uh, you've got to anchor them into the solid part of the frame. This is a piece of pin block here. Uh, you've either got pin block or a solid piece of maple on the frames, even on the Oscar Schmidts, and you've got to anchor into that solid piece of wood. You've got to anchor it well to keep it there. So. That pretty much covers it, doesn't it? Yeah, that uh, that pretty much does. Uh, I was just going to point out that if you're looking for it, let me see that harp again. This one? Yeah, if you're looking at a used harp and you're trying to see, it's very difficult to see because this uh, this right here is, a, is the spot where the worst part of the warp often is. It can be directly under the sound hole too, but you, especially while the bar is on, You've got to hold it up to your eye and stare down there between the strings and the top of the harp. And you've got to do it from both sides in order to try to find that uh, without, taking the, uh, without taking the bars off. Now this one, this particular harp is probably savable, but I'm going to have to do some work to save it. The other things that we're talking about warped tops, we get asked all the time about, uh, should I be using a humidifier? Um, it depends on where you are and the situation you're in. Now, if you're in uh, Bali, for instance, you don't need a humidifier, you need a dryer <laughs> because uh, high humidity is, can be just as bad as low humidity. Um, so whether or not you need a humidifier, that's, uh, that's a big question. Here in the Northwest, we really have it good um, because in the summertime, our humidity sits right around 50%, uh, give or take 20%. Uh, 20 cents. You can, you can be at 30, you can be at 70, both of which are acceptable. They're not going to do harm to your instrument. And then in the winter time, our humidity goes way up, but we're, we have our instruments inside and we have our heat on, and the humidity comes down to right about 50% again, so we do pretty well. But uh, Hal had a really good solution for uh, humidifying his instrument when he was living in Arizona. I'd like you to tell me a little bit about that. You're talking about the dampet? Yeah. Um, I had an instrument, uh, a dampet, we don't have one here. Uh, a dampet is have one, but... what uh, um, professional um, string players like violinists, cellists use in their instruments. They also make them for guitars. It's a long green hose with holes and inside there's a little absorbent sponge. You want me to get one? Oh yeah, go All grab right. one. So this is a dampet and this one looks like a guitar dampet. Um, they make them for violins, they make them for cellos, they actually make them for string basses. Those are really big. Um, this is about the size that would be perfect for an auto harp. Um, and uh, the inside there's, there's little holes on the outside, and the inside is a humidity, it's like a sponge. And you soak this in water, and it uh, soaks up the water, and then you dry it off on the outside, and you put it, you can put it in your case, but I actually put it in my auto harp. I drilled a hole through the back, um, and so I had a hole in the back that was about this big um, that the damp it would go through, and I would feed it in like this, and it lived inside my harp, which is what violinists and cellists do. And if you have a um, $12 million Stradivarius, um, you can put a dampet in it, as far as I know. <laughs> um, so it's safe for your instrument, um, and it humidifies it from the inside out. So um, that is one way to humidify, you got to change. You got to pull this out every day, and rehumidify it because it doesn't hold that much water. Depends on how dry your climate is, um, but you got to check it all the time. Um, but that's what I did in Arizona, um, and uh, apparently Pete really likes that idea. <laughs> I, yeah, the, Hal came up with this and showed me. 
and I, I really liked the idea and I, I got these uh, in and when people come to me for, in, that live in desert situations especially that uh, want to play their instrument, well, I offer this as a good solution. The, uh, now the other, uh, the other direction with humidity is high humidity. Uh, I mentioned Bali a little while ago because we have actually had an instrument in Bali that uh, just contorted the top. It was so wet all the time, and the uh, user of the auto harp was lived in a lived in a, literally a grass hut. So the the auto harp had no chance. <laughs> so that's that will uh, when when the humidity is high, it expands all the all the wood and it has nowhere to go so it contorts it uh, it either sinks or bulges uh, and uh, does all kinds of crazy things and when it's too dry it dries out the wood and the wood shrinks and that's when you get a split uh, so those are the those are the two things that happen and for the most part they're pretty easy to avoid but um, uh, but when you're in extreme conditions, well, take measures to take care of your instrument. If okay. you're traveling, it's a good idea, if you're going from one kind of climate to another, leave your instrument in its case for a while. Uh, it, it gives it time to acclimatize. If it has time to acclimatize, it's much less likely to sustain damage. Okay, so um, you want to talk about tuning wrenches? Tuning wrenches. <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, so the tuning wrench, the new Oscar Schmidt auto harps, and by new I mean, what, maybe 10 years? Yeah, probably in the last 10 years. Um, they come with a tuning wrench that looks roughly like this. It's not a complete um, 90 degree angle. Um, and inside the tuner, it's a little square. And... Um, it fits their tuning pegs, and their tuning pegs are different than what we could call the classic tuning pegs that were used on everything for so many years that you will find on the vintage Oscar Schmitz, that you find on our uh, Daigle auto harps, and all the Luthier auto harps have these older style, they're German, aren't they? Uh, the older tuning pins, yeah, they, they were German, uh, then they were made in Japan for years. And they fit um, a lot of the tuning wrenches that are um, available out there for sale, but not these tuning wrenches fit these pins. The old tuning wrenches do not. The new, fancier tuning wrenches do not. Um, and this is the only thing that works on it. So if you have a newer Oscar Schmidt, as in the past 10 years, hold on to your tuning wrench because nothing else fits and nothing else works. And this tuning wrench, when you put it on, it doesn't drop down very well onto the pins and it wiggles. And we have found that uh, lately there's been quite a bit of variance from tuning pin to tuning pin. Um, like on this one, it doesn't drop down very far and it is um, quite wiggly. And that's the best fit that it has for that tuning wrench. This one, it drops down a lot further and it wiggles less. So they seem to be individually shaped, um, but this is the only thing that works on it. We have these, this is a, a T-handle wrench that we sell at Daigle Auto Harps, and this is what comes with a Daigle Auto Harp when you buy it, and if you try to use that on these pins, it doesn't even fit on them, and it will be up on the very tippy top, and it will strip the pin if you try to use it on these tuning pins. So beware and use the right wrench on your harp because these won't work. This is the only thing that'll work. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, whenever you're tuning, make sure that it's seated, your wrench is seated to your pin 
the, uh, you don't want to be, what, what Hal's just saying, you don't want to be turning that pin with the wrench not seated because you're liable to strip out your, your tuning pin. So just make, whatever kind of wrench you're using, make sure that they are seated. Uh, these, we use these a lot in the shop for the, what we call the long handle or gooseneck. And uh, we like them because you have so much leverage out here. And of course, when we're working on harps, we're working fast. Uh, so we'll, we'll take our finger and spin these around and just all kinds of stuff. But again, just make sure whatever harp you're using, whatever uh, wrench you're using, that it's well seated. And these, you just have to seat them as best you can. Right. And again, they just, they just don't go on very far. But that's the best you can do with these newer Oscar Schmitz. Yeah, yeah. Here's a frequently asked question. Pete, <laughs> why are you called a different drummer? Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I guess that's, uh, that's something I brought on to myself. I, I made my living playing the drums for quite a few years. And uh, that explains why. Yeah. So, yeah, when I, when I went into business doing other things outside of. Uh, uh, performing, I, uh, I formed a company. The company name was ADD, a different drummer. It, it didn't serve me well at times because I would say um, that they would see ADD and they would come up and say, oh, I have a kid that had that. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's, uh, there's, there's no more explanation than that. It's just uh, lots of people like to... Uh, I uh, marched to the beat of a different drummer, and uh, they've got to have that beat, so. So you kept the name. Did you keep the name just because it's easier corporately to keep no. the same corporate entity, but just change the I kept it because it's my company. I can name it whatever I want. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, officially with the state of Washington, we are Daigle Auto Harps LLC, uh, DBA, a different drummer. So there you are. Okay, and it's on the label of every <laughs> Daigle Auto Harp. Another frequently asked question is, gosh, Pete, those auto harps behind you are so pretty. Are they available now? <sighs> well, you could buy this one or that one or this one. Well, or you could buy this one or that one or, or those two over there. So but, we'll take that as a yes. I guess that would be a yes. One final last frequently asked question. How? How can I become a patron of Stocking the Wild Auto Harp? If you are interested in supporting this program, if you enjoy this kind of programming and you want to support it, you can zip over to patreon.com slash halweeks and kick in a few bucks per month to keep this programming going. I can't do it without you, and I really appreciate your help when you help me to help you learn the auto harp. So thanks to Pete Daigle for, for um, staying after work to make this video. Thanks to Keith Daigle for um, being the videographer. And uh, we'll see you next time on Stocking the Wild Auto Harp. And we're going to play out. Aha, uh -huh. that's... Grab your harp there. Here we go. Bye-bye.